What's going on guys? In this video, we are going to be discussing NAN values. So NAN stands for not a number. And when you're dealing with a lot of data or you're trying to get your data into a data frame, sometimes you'll have either corrupted values or missing values. So in pandas, a data frame has to have sort of fixed dimensions. It has to be rectangular. So each column has to have the same amount of rows and each row has to have the same amount of columns. So if your data is of variable length, pandas has to fill in those values. And a lot of times what pandas will do is fill in NAND values. And if your data has missing values, pandas will also just uh, fill those missing values with NAND. So NAND is basically a replacement for any missing values or corrupt data. And in this video, we will learn how to deal with NAND values. All right, so the first thing we'll do is we're going to do what we do in all of the previous videos, which is import pandas and create a data frame. Now, pd.readcsv, I'm reading movie.csv, which I've used in the previous videos as well. So if you guys are not familiar with that, you can check out the previous videos. All right, now I'm going to run df head and we're going to take a look at the first couple of rows. And you'll notice under gross, there's a couple of NAND values. And then under budget, we have another NAND value and aspect ratio. So we have multiple NAND values within the first two rows. df.shape, I'm not sure where I put this here, but I'll just cut it for now, okay. All right, so now we're gonna look at df.tail, which is the last few rows. And you'll see that there's a substantial amount of NAND values. So we have one, two, three, four, five. All of the director names have NAND values. Director Facebook likes have NAND values. And gross has NAND values. So there's a lot of NAND values in the last five rows. So now I'll introduce you to df.dropna. df.dropna basically drops any rows with any NAND values within the row. So each row, as you can see, we have 27 columns, has 27 values from those 27 columns. So even if any of those columns have a NAND value, df.dropna will drop it. So what I'm going to do now is df.dropna, and I'm going to chain it with tail. So df.dropna will return a data frame with the NANs dropped, or with the NAND rows dropped. And then I'll chain it with tail to see how the new data frame looks or how the tail of the new data frame looks. So I'll run this and you'll see that the last five rows don't have any NAND values as opposed to up here in the original data frame, the last five rows under director name had NAND values, the director Facebook likes had NAND values, etc. Here, all the NAND values are gone. And this is because of df.dropna. I mean, we can look at the head again. And just a few seconds ago, we saw that the first two rows, A Raven Cruz and Aaron Han, have NAND values. So if we do df.dropna.head, you'll see A Raven Cruz and Aaron Han are gone. And we start off with Aaron Snyder and Aaron Seltzer. Now, if we want to know how many rows have NAND values, we can use the shape attribute. So we'll chain the dot shape attribute to df.dropna. So this is the shape after we've dropped all of the NAND rows or any rows containing NAND values in comparison with the original data frame of 4,916. So as you can see, there's a substantial amount of difference um, over 1,000, 1,300 uh, rows containing NAND values. All right, now, Currently, we're dropping any rows with even a single NAND value. Now, if you want to change this default behavior, we can do so using the how parameter. So df.dropna how equals all is the other option. So the default behavior is how equals any, but we're going to change it to how equals all. So how equals any is basically saying if the rows contain even one, if there are any NAND values, drop the row. In contrast, how equal all is saying all of the columns of that row have to have NAND values. So the entire row has to be completely crossed to consider dropping it. So how equals all and how equals any. Now let's just run this. 
And if we look at the first five rows, when we set the how parameter to all, you'll see that Aaron Cruz and Aaron Han are still there. And that's because they only have one or two NAND values within the row. For them to be dropped, the entire row would have to contain NAND values, which in this case, they don't. All right, so if we want to see how many entirely corrupted rows there are, we can chain df.dropNA with shape, the dot attribute. So 4916, in contrast with the original data frame, 4916. So basically, none of our rows are completely corrupted. All right. So how equals all or how equals any, those are kind of extreme parameters or extreme behaviors because you either have one or you either have all. There's nothing in between. Now pandas will give you the options just in case you want something more in between. And that can be done using the thresh parameter or argument. So let's take a look at this thresh parameter argument. So what thresh is, is basically a threshold. So here thresh equals 24. So what it's saying is I need to have less than 24 NAND values. So legitimate values. If I have less than 24 legitimate values, I want you to drop the row. So since we have 27 columns, less than 23 legitimate columns or legitimate values would be four NANDs. So the thinking is sort of uh, backwards as opposed to thinking about NANDs, we're now talking about legitimate values. So if our row has at least 24 legitimate values out of the 27, we will keep it. But if it's less than this threshold, we will drop it. So that's basically it. Now let's just run this and see what the shape is after we set the threshold to 24. So by setting the threshold to 24, we're looking for any rows with more than three NAND values. So if there are uh, more than three NAND values, those rows are going to be dropped. So let's see. So the outcome is 4728 in comparison to the originals uh, 4916. We dropped around 200 uh, rows. So there are about 200 rows containing more than three NAND values. All right, so moving on, column-wise instead of row-wise. So we've been dealing with uh, rows, basically. We're trying to look at how many NAND values there are in rows, and we're using these filters to filter based on the amount of NAND values in rows. Now, if we want to apply those filters on columns, a pandas allows us to do that as well. All right, so the first thing we'll do is we'll look at how many columns we have, 27. And now we'll look at this axis parameter. So df.dropNA axis equals 1. So the default axis is zero, which is the row. But if we switch the axis to equal one, it's uh, basically saying apply everything to columns. So axis equals one means apply everything to columns. Now we're going to leave the default how to any columns containing even one NAND value is going to be dropped. So let's just run this. And now you'll see from the 27, we have only about seven columns remaining. So there are a substantial amount of columns containing NAND values. All right, moving on, subsets. Now, sometimes you want to drop an entire row based on a column. So say you're interested in a specific column and to see if it has a NAND value or not. And if it does have a NAND value, you want to drop the entire row. So pandas allows you to do that with subset. So this first row, dfcolor.isnull, is just checking if color has a null value. And the null value is basically NAN, NAN. So dfcolor.isNull will return a series of trues and falses, and we use this trues and falses for Boolean indexing. So actually, I'll create another cell just so you guys can see. Uh, dfcolor.isNull. And as you can see, it returns back uh, a series of trues and falses. And if color, is null or nan, it will return a true. And if the color has a legitimate value, it will return false. All right. So we use these Boolean values for Boolean indexing. Now I've gone over Boolean indexing in a few videos uh, prior. So you guys can check that out as well. All right. So if you run this, we're going to extract all of the rows where color is null. And if you scroll down, you'll see there's 19 rows. So 19 rows where color has the NAND value. Brandon Landers, Charles Matal, Christopher Barnard, etc. All right. Now what we're going to do now 
is we're going to drop Na based off of these null values. So wherever color has a null value, we want to drop that row. And we do that by using the subset argument or parameter. So df.dropNA subset equals color dot shape. And if we run this, we should have 19 rows dropped. So 4897 in comparison with the original data frame shape 4916, which is 19 rows. Now these two lines are just another way of checking uh, what we just checked a few seconds ago, which is checking how many a uh, color has and how many are dropped. So let's break down this sort of complicated looking line of code. df.dropNA subset equals color will return a data frame where any rows whose color value is nan will be dropped. So once again, it returns a data frame where any rows whose color value contains nans will be dropped. So we get back a data frame, then we'll chain it with the brackets.color or brackets color. So when we chain it with the brackets color, we're basically getting back a series. So we have a data frame, then we have color applied to the data frame to get back a color series. Then we'll apply value counts to the color series to get the value counts of each of the unique values within the color series. Now I've gone over value counts in the previous video. You guys can check that out as well. Now this drop in a equals false is basically saying we want value counts to count the NAND value as well. So usually value counts will not count the NAND values, but drop in a equals false by setting drop in a to false, we're basically saying count the NAND values as well. Now in this line, since we're dropping the NAND values, we should not get back any NAND values within value counts. So I run this. So as you can see, the only two unique values are color and black and white, and we don't see NANDs. As opposed to if I run value counts on the original data frame, you'll see that we have uh, 19 NANDs. So this was just another way to check how many NAND values we have and how many are dropped. All right, now finally. So throughout the video, I've been uh, using df.dropNA, but you'll notice that it's not making any changes to the original data frame. So basically here, I can do df.dropNA.shape and I can compare it with the original data frame shape. This is because df.dropNA doesn't make any changes to your original data frame. It makes a copy of the data frame and then it will apply the copy of the data frame. However, if you want to make the changes permanent, you can do so by using in place equals true. So let's just take a look at this. So df.shape uh, 491627. Now, if I do df.dropNA in place equals true, you'll notice that my data frame, that shape will now change. So we've made permanent changes by dropping the NAs and saving that to the original data frame. So df.shape now is 3,655 in contrast with the original data frame shape, 4,916. So be very careful when you're trying to use uh, in place equals true. Be very sure that this is what you want to do. What you can usually do is make copies of your data frame, um, df.copy. But in this situation, if you do run into trouble, you can always just reload your data frame by reading from the CSV file. All right. So this was a, a quick introduction to NAND values. And in the next video, you'll see another way of handling NAND values. All right. So that's it with this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.